Um, so Jeff uh, had performed with us a few times. Um, I think the first time I saw him here, uh, he, he performed with Jeff Davis, and that was back in 1993, and then he's done a few concerts since, and it's good to have him back here again. Um, I actually went into the archives to uh, pull out a newsletter that Justin had composed about the performance. The, the one I found was from 1993, and just to uh, pull out a, a few uh, lines that Justin put together, uh, he says, the concert's going to be a lot of fun tonight. Uh, Jeff does old-time banjo tunes and uh, minstrel tunes from the South. Um, they uh, play various instruments, and you can see Jeff has a, a variety of instruments set up here today. Um, uh, he's a fascinating song collector and authority on the repertoire, um, in addition to helping preserve the folk edition uh, tradition in North America. Um, it's also a continuing family tradition for Jeff. His parents started in the 1930s traveling along the eastern seaboard from the Adir Adirondacks to the Great Smoky Mountains and the Outer Banks of North Carolina collecting folk songs and uh, collecting their stories. And they put together a collection called Traditional American Folk Songs from the Ann and Frank Warner Collection. Uh, I believe I saw one of the recordings is available out there today. So this evening you'll hear music that puts you in touch with America's past. Please welcome back Jeff Warner. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Justin. Now the Glen B. Burt, she's a mighty fast boat with a mighty fast captain, too. And he sits all day on the hurricane deck and he keeps his eye on the crew. Well, I can't stay here cause I work too hard. I'm bound to leave this town. I'll take my duds and tote them on my back when the Glandy Burt come down. It's ho, Louisiana. I'm bound to leave this town. I'll take my duds and tote them on my back when the Glandy Burt come down. Now the Glendy Burke has a mighty fine crew and they sing the boatman's song and they burn the pitch and the pine not too for to shove the boat along. Well, the smoke goes up and the engine roar and the wheel go round and round. So fare thee well, I'll take a little trip when the Glendy Burke come down. It's ho, Louisiana, I'm bound to leave this town. I'll take my duds and tow them on my back when the Glendy Burke come down. She's pretty as a pink, I'll meet her on the way. I'll take her back to the sunny old south, and there I'll have her stay. So don't you fret, my pretty little miss, and don't you fret, Miss Brown. I'll take her there for the middle of the week and roll the cotton down. And it's ho, Louisiana, I'm bound to leave this town. I'll take my duds and tote them on my back when the glandy bird come down. Till I find myself on the dock in New Orleans again. They make me work in the hay fields here. They hit my head with a flail. I'm going where they work with the sugar and the cane and roll the cotton bale. And it's ho, Louisiana. I'm bound to leave this town. I'll take my blitz and tote them on my back when the glandy bird come down.
Well, I thought I'd start with something very American. Um, Stephen Foster wrote that, Lindy Burke. It's not one of his better known tunes, but I guess he's America's first acknowledged great songwriter. Oh, he wrote so many wonderful songs. Swanee River, and, um, Old Kentucky Home. Um, I heard that he wrote Bugs Bunny's favorite song, which was, I dream of Jeannie, she's a light brown hair. <laughs> but I also thought it was kind of novel that he spent his whole life in Pennsylvania writing about the South. And the only time he ever went South was in 1850s on a riverboat called the Glenby Burke, named for a former mayor of New Orleans. And he had such a great time, he came back and wrote a song about it. This strange little song. I don't know what it's about, but it sure is fun. Um, I learned it from a Smithsonian recording, Folkways recording of uh, Indiana tunes and, and songs. And later traced it back to Vermont, seems to be like an 1840s song called the Woodhaulers Song. And then the more I looked at it, it's all over the country. Uh, Frank Prophet, who was a singer my parents met way back in the 30s, sang so many great songs, we'll revisit him today also had a version of it, but I didn't know that until long after I had learned the song. So here's the little story. Make of it what you will. I love it. I woke up one morning in 1845. I thought myself quite lucky to find myself alive. Hitched up my haul team, my business to pursue, and went to hauling coal as I used for to do. Now the alehouse being open and the whiskey running free. As soon as I had one glass, another stood by me. Only hauled with one load instead of hauling four And got so drunk in shipping's port that I couldn't haul no more I took my saddle from the wall and I staggered from the barn Saddled up my old gray mare thinking it no harm Climbed upon his back and I rode away so still I scarcely caught my breath till I came to Laurel Hill. My father fast pursued me. He rode both night and day. He must have had a pilot or else he'd have lost his way. Looked in every hole and corner where'er he saw the light till his old gray head was wet with the dews of the night. I have a bold companion whose name I will not tell. Invited me to go with him downtown to cut a swell. After much persuasion with him, I did agree. We went down to the tailor shop, a fiddler for to see. Up stepped two young ladies, all ready for to dance. Up stepped two young gentlemen, all in advance. A fiddler being willing and his arm being strong, we danced the night in Laurel Hill at least six hours long. I woke up one morning in 1845. I thought myself quite lucky to find myself alive. 
Hitched up my whole team, my business to pursue, and went to hauling coals I used for to do. figure it out, let me know. But I love the fact that it's all full of mystery. <coughs> in the early 90s, I found myself down in Beaufort, North Carolina, right near the Outer Banks, right um, near Wil Wilmington. And I went to the Maritime Museum down there, got a little education. And the folklorist who was working in the museum at the time had rounded up a bunch of Menhaden fishermen. They were guys in their 90s and 80s who had worked back in the 50s um, catching Menhaden or alewives and their little tiny fish that they're harvested for uh, uh, fertilizer, I believe. And the way they did it was there'd be two boats, two ro uh, kind of uh, rowboats, and big net in between. And the guys would stand there and pull the nets together and while they did, they would sing rhythmic songs to help them know when to move the nets. So shanties, they were shanties. And he got them out and he put them on stage once and they couldn't remember the words to the song. <laughs> so the genius that he was is he set them up on stage the way they used to stand in the boat around each other and then the words came back to them. And this is one of the Menhaden fishermen's uh, most widely known songs now. They got out and around. I saw them at Mystic Seaport once. It was fun. And it says, Oh, Rosie Ann, sweet Rosie Ann, bye-bye, my Rosie Anna. I'm going away, but not to stay. And I won't be home tomorrow. I thought I heard the captain say, Bye-bye, my Rosianna. Tomorrow is our sailing day. And I won't be home tomorrow. That big old boat coming down the bend. Bye-bye, my Rosianna. All loaded down with fishermen. And I won't be home tomorrow. That streetcar run right by her door. Bye bye, my Rosianna. That streetcar run right by her door. And I won't be home tomorrow. A dollar a day, that's a fisherman's pay. Bye bye, my Rosianna. It's easy come, easy go away. And I won't be home tomorrow. Oh, Rosianne, sweet Rosianne. Bye-bye, my Rosianna. I'm going away and not to stay. And I won't be home tomorrow. I thought I heard the captain say, Bye-bye, my Rosianna. Tomorrow is our sailing day. And I won't be home tomorrow. That streetcar run right by her door. Bye-bye, my Rosianna. That streetcar run right by her door. And I won't be home tomorrow. Real 20th century shanty. <laughs> Pete said, in fact, my folks had uh, done a lot of collecting of old time songs. Uh, my father was from the South, uh, my mother from Missouri, but they met in New York City, so I'm a Greenwich Village kid. Um, 
And somebody brought a mountain dulcimer, you've seen them, I'm sure, lap dulcimer to his house in 1937. And nobody had seen it until Jane, Jane Ritchie came out of the hills in um, the 1950s and started playing the dulcimer everywhere. Most people hadn't seen it unless they were from Appalachia. Uh, my father said, this is beautiful. Where'd you get it? And he said, he got it from a mountain man named um, down, down in, in Western North Carolina. And my father wrote to him and said, would you make me one? And he said, yes, if you'll send it the money ahead because we have no money. And it was in a very unlettered hand. My folks amazingly borrowed a car and made the long trip down from New York City to northwest of Boone, North Carolina in 1938 to meet this family and they fell in love with them. And it sent them on not long journeys because they both had day jobs. So it was uh, week, weeks in the summer when they could go looking for songs and they found great ones. One of the families that they met was on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, the Tillett family. And I thought I'd do one or more songs from them tonight. Tink was the man's name. Charles was a fisherman, Tink Tillett. And he played what he called accordion. Um, and he had an amazing repertoire, not only of really old stuff, but English stuff too that he'd got from other fishermen and, and uh, shipping guys. But his wife was, had the wonderful name of Eleazar, Eleazar Tillett. And I got to know her. She lived into her 90s. So I got to meet her as a little kid and then go back and visit with her. And she sang this lovely song called Her Bright Smile Haunts Me Still that I thought I would like to do. It wasn't until much later that we found out it was a popular song uh, from 1854 <laughs> that had spread around and then died out but was kept alive in oral tradition. Let's see what I can do with it. It's been a year since last we met. We may never meet again. I have struggled to forget, but the struggle was in vain. For her voice lives on the breeze, her spirit comes at her will in the midnight on the seas. Her bright smile haunts me still in the midnight on the seas. Her bright smile haunts me still. I have sailed neath alien skies. I have chartered hazards path. I have seen the storms arise from a giant in his wrath. Every danger I have known that a reckless life can fill. Though her presence is now flown, her bright smile haunts me still. Though her presence is now flown, her bright smile haunts me still. At the first sweet dawn of light, when I gaze upon the deep, her form still fills my sight, while the stars their vigil keep. When I close my aching eyes, sweet dreams my memory fill, and from sleep when I From sleep when I arise, her bright smile haunts me still.
Eliezer Tillett. get it back in my hands. That, yeah. uh, this comes from Joanna Colcord, who uh, published a book called Songs the Sailormen Sang back in 1900. Her father had been a ship's captain. And it's a, just a nice little song, but uh, Jeff Davis, my partner back in the 80s and 90s, took the last song in that book and uh, made a couple of changes in it. And it came out beautifully and very old sounding. So this is uh, Jamestown Homeward Bound from Joanna Colcord. farmer's heart with joy is filled when the crops are good and sound. But who can feel the wild delight of the sailor homeward bound? For three long years have passed away since we left old freedom shore. Our long felt wish has come at last and we're homeward bound once more. And we're homeward bound once more To where the sky is clear As a maiden's eye that longs for our return To the land where milk and honey flows And liberty was born So fill our sails with the favoring gales And with shipmates all around We'll give three cheers for our starry flag And the Jamestown homeward bound And the Jamestown homeward bound Now we have arrived in port and stripping's our last job. And friendly faces look around in search of Bill or Bob. They see that we are safe at last from the perils of the sea. Saying welcome Columbia's mariners to your homes and liberty. To your homes and liberty. Jamestown Homeward Bound. Well, every now and then I've got to do this story just to keep it in my brain, and you will be the victims yeah. as I refresh it. It was back in the 70s, a friend of mine I uh, used to go to this camp called Pinewoods Camp, lovely, beautiful place, and uh, learned a lot of my music there, uh, stuff I hadn't learned from my parents. I was learning from other 
uh, storytellers and singers and song leaders. And a friend of mine, who was a Morris dancer, uh, took Sleeping Beauty and spoonerized it. Do you know that? It's just incredible. And it came up with this amazing thing. She took Sleeping Beauty and made it into Beeping Slooty. <laughs> and that's the story. <laughs> Once upon a while, there was a prudible princess. When she was a bee wavy, Food Garys gave her Bunning Studi, Weight Grisdom, and they warp shit. <laughs> but the Fadberry said, when she tweeched the rage of Enti, she would frick her finger on a dindle and spy. But the Fudgary said, when she fricked her finger, she would only doll into a seep fleep. Lever than us, her caddy the ding was vorely sexed and had all the winning spiels in the bingdom kerned. One day, when the fruitable princess had tweeched the rage of Enti, she was pondering round the Wallace when she came upon a wuggly old itch, <laughs> spitting and sinning. <laughs> when she spied the trindle, she fricked her finger. And she dell into a seep fleep, wick as a quink. <laughs> when she did, all the courtiers in the callus sell a fleep too. And outside, a horny gridge threw up. <laughs> Pime tast. And no one could penetrate the porns. Then one day, a hung and pransome yince came lighting her on. <coughs> At a fudge of his tinger, the porn started. <laughs> when he saw beeping Slooty, he lissed her on the kips. <laughs> and she smoke up and wild. <laughs> and they were parried in the malice and hid lappily ever after. Well, good news is I can still do it. <laughs> One of those times I was at Pinewood's camp, I met a man named Larry Older who was on staff. He was a, a logger from the Adirondacks. And he, in, in turn, had studied under uh, one of the great Sing singers Ted Ashlaw from the western slope of the Adirondacks. Adirondacks from about the 1850s, as one scholar said, it was the, uh, the Saudi Arabia of wood. <laughs> it uh, created the ties that built the railroads that crossed America. I mean, in, we here in New England have a lot of history. Of, I live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, I have for the last 25 years. And I remember driving down the street once and seeing a road called Mast Road. I said, what's that about? Realizing that before the revolution, New Hampshire provided the masts for Great Britain. And they had to make r roads wide enough to get the big trees down from the woods. But the Adirondacks took over. And uh, maybe we'll do more than one song from that. But I love this little song called Range the Wild Woods Over. We'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumbering go, once more a lumbering go. We'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumbering go. So you can help me out with that. And the chorus says, We'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. Once more a lumber and go. And we'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. 
From all ye sons of freedom who round the mountains range, come all ye jolly lumber boys and listen to my song. On the banks of the sweet Saranac, where its limpid waters flow, and we'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. Once more a lumber and go. And we'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. To the music of our axes, we'll make the woods resound. And many a tall and lofty pine come tumbling to the ground. At night round our good campfires we'll sing while cold winds blow. And we'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. Once more a lumber and go. And we'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. You may sing about your parties, your parties and your plays. But pity us, poor lumber boy, go jouncing on our sleighs. But we ain't past no better pastime than to hunt the buck and doe. And we'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. Once more a lumber and go. And we'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. To the music of our axes, we'll make the woods resound. And many a tall and lofty pine come tumbling to the ground. At night round our good campfires we'll sing while cold winds blow. And we'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. Once more a lumber and go. And we'll range the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. When winter it is over, and the ice-bound streams are free. We'll drive our logs to Glens Falls, and we'll haste the girls to see. With plenty to eat and plenty to drink, back to the world we'll go. And we'll range the wild woods over, and once more a lumber and go. Once more a lumber and go. And we'll range the wild woods over, and once more a lumber and go. We'll range the wild woods over, and once more. And we'll reach the wild woods over and once more a lumber and go. Logging camps. Um, I've picked up in, over the years as I've become more and more interested in songs that come out of the Adirondacks and the logging trade. A um, bunch of stories. There was one very lovely story from a, um, a lumber camp in Pike County, Pennsylvania, the northeast part of the state, which is apparently a, a famous for Applejack, hard cider. And this guy was a logger, but in, everybody had different jobs in the summertime, because when you were a logger, you went up into the woods in October, cleared some land, built a house called a shanty, and then 30 to 100 guys would stay there <coughs> all winter long cutting down trees. Um, but in the summer, he was a good fisherman. And his favorite bait was cut-up frog, cut-up frog. And whenever he fished, he always carried a flask of uh, Pike County, County Applejack. So one day he was out standing in the river, and he looked down at a rock right next to him, and there was the perfect frog. And he made a grab for the frog, but at the same time he did, so did a black snake. So both he and the snake had a hold of this frog, and neither would let go. Until he pulled out his flask, and he poured some of that stuff down the throat of the snake which gagged and let go of the frog. So he had the frog, cut it up, happily fishing. But he said about 10 minutes later, he felt something rubbing against his leg. And he looked down, and there was the snake. And it had another frog in its mouth. <laughs> a 
Good stuff. Good stuff. Let's do this. I've had the good fortune to uh, know Jay Unger, the great fiddle player, some, yep, and work occasionally at Ashokan Camp. And he taught me this song that he had written and I loved. But apparently he just kind of sloughed it off. I never heard him do it again or think about it. But not me, I loved it. Pick her up of unconsidered trifles. Um, must have been 30 or 40 years ago and he was eating too much red meat. He decided he needed to stop that. So he wrote this song about eating chicken instead. So, and the chorus is chicken, chicken, put them in a pot. Come up most anyway, tell you what you got. What? Chicken in a pot. So you have to do the what part. <laughs> See if you can get it on time. It says, chicken, chicken, put them in a pot. Put them up most anyway, tell you what you got. What? Chicken in a pot. Well, you guys are good. That was perfect. <laughs> you know this song. Inflationary times, some folks got lots of bread. We're still paying through the nose just to keep our family fed. We tried to change our diet and get something cheaper to eat. We're eating lots more chicken now and a whole lot less red meat. It's chicken, chicken, put them in a pot. I'll cook them up most anyway, tell you what you got. What? Chicken in a pot. just to get yourself that bird. Make sure you get the whole thing because you can use it all, I've heard. You can cook the eggs and gnaw the bones and eat up all of that meat. Stuff a pillow with the feathers and make a soup out of the feet. It's chicken, chicken, put them in a pot. I cook them up most anyway, tell you what you got. Chicken in a pot. Eating all these chickens, I'm sure that it's a sin. It seems their lives have just begun before we do them in. I've been doing a little counting, and I'll tell to you right now, it takes 523 chickens just to make up one old cow. It's chicken, chicken, put them in a pot. I cook them up most anyway, tell you what you got. Chicken in a pot. Fried, broiled, braised, curried, baked, and creamed. Cordon bleu and barbecued. I can see them in my dreams. Croquette, cutlet, amandine, apricosh, and fricassee. It's time to switch to tofu and set your chickens free. It's chicken, chicken, put them in a pot. I cook them up most anyway, tell you what you got. Chicken in a pot.
trying to tune the banjo. Hmm. Well, that's, yeah, that's nice. No banjo has truly ever been in tune, so <laughs> try, but you won't make it. But it has yielded a lot of great banjo jokes, hasn't it? Really? One that I liked was, what's the definition of a minor second? Which was uh, two banjo players playing the same note. <laughs> Boy, I, I remember one club date I had. I think it was in the UK, as a matter of fact. I just could not tune the banjo. So in desperation, I said to the audience, anybody got any good banjo jokes? And lo and behold, a great one came out. It was great. It was said, two cowboys were out west, and they got captured by Indians. And they were both going to be killed by the chief. But the chief said, you know what? I'm going to give each of you one wish before you're dispatched. He said, what would you like to do? He said, well, I would like to go back to my horse and get my banjo and play Foggy Mountain Breakdown one last time. He said, OK, you can do that. And he said to the other guy, what would you like? And he said, kill me first. <laughs> well, by that time, I was in tune, and it was great. It was <laughs> Perfect, perfect working out. And we'll see if I can do this. Um, I, but 10 years ago, I got entranced by an early commercial recording, a 1903 commercial record. I didn't even know they had records for sale in 1903, but it was. And I just, I loved it, and I played it over and over, and finally tried to learn it. And when I was in the UK, I was singing it over there, and people said, oh God, not that old song. And it said it was, uh, they said it was a parody of the old Bull and Bush. The old Bull and Bush is a pub in Cockney, London, and there's a song about that pub. So I stopped singing it over there, another American stolen song from the British, only to find out that we were first. It was commissioned in 1903 by Anheuser-Busch Company in St. Louis, and called Under the Anheuser-Busch. You may actually have heard it. 1903. Talk about the shade of the sheltering palms. Praise the bamboo tree and its wide-spreading charms. There's a little bush that grows right... Oh, I'm supposed to say when this is the last song to let people know. So we'll do this and then take a little break and then we'll come back and sing indefinitely. Talk about the shade of the sheltering palms. Praise the bamboo tree and its wide-spreading charms. There's a little bush that grows right here in town. You know its name, it is one such renown. Often with my sweetheart just after the play, to this little place then our footsteps will stray. If she hesitates when she looks at the sign, Softly I whisper, now, Sue, don't decline. Come, come, come and make eyes with me under the Anheuser bush. Come, come, drink a Budweiser with me under the Anheuser bush. Hear the old German band. Come, let me hold your hand. Yeah, do. A stein or two under the Anheuser Bush.
Talk about the place where the swells go to dine. Picture you and me with our sandwich and stein. Underneath the sign where the good fellows meet. Life seems worth living, our joy is complete. If you're sad at heart, take a trip there tonight. You'll forget your woes and your eyes will grow bright. There you surely find me with my sweetheart Sue. Come down this evening, I'll introduce you. Come, come, come and make eyes with me under the Anheuser bush. Come, come, drink a Budweiser with me under the Anheuser bush. Hear the old German band. Come, let me hold your hand, yeah. Do, do. Come and have a Stein or two under the Anheuser bush. Come, come, come and make eyes with me under the Anheuser bush. Come, come, drink a Budweiser with me under the Anheuser bush. Hear the old German band. Come, let me hold your hand, yeah. Do, do. Come and have a Stein or two under the Anheuser bush. Great. Good singing. Thanks for the sound. Wow. Good room. All right, we'll take a little uh, stretch and then we'll pop back and keep going. Going over formalities. Mmm, good coffee. Here below, a long time of traveling away from 
said my folks took off and went down to the southern mountains in 38 to meet the Tillet, to meet the Tillets later, but to meet the uh, Prophet family and the Hicks family. And Frank Prophet was an amazing, he was a carpenter and a old time banjo player. And the, uh, he came over from the hills to meet these people from what they called the beyond, um, who had come down from New York to see them and sang all day and he sang songs with my father and uh, we'll come revisit him later in this, this set but that was his song he learned that from his father who said he learned it in a black church in western north carolina which there couldn't have been very many of them out there in the mountains long time traveling here below lovely well, a friend a new friend was talking to me about perhaps early songs that were about beginning of air travel? Did I know any? I said, yeah, I know one I can't sing. But I sang it to him. <laughs> uh, but this is a beautiful one. Ren Shields, uh, the contribution of Tin Pan Alley into American folk music can't be underestimated. Just like minstrelsy, you know, we. We despair on minstrelsy and how it made fun of black people and all, but if you stop to think about it, the merging of black and white music which happened on the stage in New York in 1843, the very beginnings of American minstrelsy was the merging of black and white culture making American pop music for the first time. And if, if you look, that's still going on, right? Black and white culture clashing and merging to make American music a world music. So we can talk about an hour and a half about that. But then Tin Pan Alley took all of that minstrelsy plus traditional songs and started doing songwriting commercially in New York. I'm sure you know the term Tin Pan Alley. Supposedly uh, down Broadway, when you walk down Broadway, every fifth shop was a music sales shop and they had hired some piano player to sit there and play the tunes that they were trying to sell and sheet music and it sounded like people hitting on tin pans was the idea, the tin pan alley. But all those songs took tradition, reworked it, and then after the songs died out in their popularity, they stayed in tradition and came back with the old time string bands like this one, which I first, I first heard from Charlie Poole and the North Carolina Ramblers, who recorded it as an old time string band in the 1920s. But I went back and found the sheet music, and I said, hmm, this is sweet. 
Friend Shields wrote it. He had heard, uh, I've heard two dates, 1904 and 1911, so I'm not sure which one of them is true. But he had heard that, that in Europe there was creation of a dirigible which would able, be able to fly across the Atlantic and thereby change the world. And he was kind of right. So he wrote this song, said, come take a trip in my airship. a sailor, once a sailor loved me, he was not a sailor who sailed o'er the wide foaming sea, he owned an airship, flew like the bird on the wing, and every Saturday evening he'd fly through my window and sing. Come take a trip in my airship. Come have a sail round the stars. Come take a trip into Venus. Come have a sail round to Mars. No one to tell while we're kissing. No one to tell while we spoon. Come take a trip in my airship. We'll visit the man in the moon. Jeff, okay. stars, he asked me if I'd name the day. Just past the dipper, I gave him my heart. We'd kissed by the light of the moon. We swore to each other we never would part, and we'd teach all the babies this tune. Come take a trip in my airship. Come have a sail round the stars. Come take a trip into Venus, come have a sail round to Mars. No one to tell while we're kissing, no one to tell while we spoon. Come take a trip in my airship, we'll visit the man in the moon. Is it too hard? You want to try it? We, we, we can do it. We can get through it. Come take a trip in my airship. Come have a sail round the stars, trip into Venus. Come take a trip into Venus. Come have a sail round to Mars. No one to tell while we're kissing. No one to tell while we're kissing. No one to tell while we spoon. Come take a trip. Come take a trip in my airship. We'll visit the man in the moon. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Ren, Ren Shields. You can look him up. He's famous. He wrote In the Good Old Summertime, among other pop songs of the day. Um, I had this great opportunity. I've had a a lot, a lot of chance to work with kids in schools teaching American history and culture through the traditional songs. It just kind of happened you know, around bicentennial time, everybody was scrambling to look for Americana, and it just kept growing and growing. And I had, um, near where I live in Portsmouth, there's a town called Stratum, and for about 10 years, I had this amazing opportunity. I'd go in for two weeks to the Stratum Elementary 
and work only with the fifth grade. Incredible. So every morning I had one class and we'd do games and make paper cutouts and talk about traditions and show pictures and stuff. And then every afternoon I had just like this, 100 fifth graders all sitting there and we had a giant sing all afternoon. And I kept looking for other things that I could do to get a little more interesting stuff and exciting stuff that I loved uh, to the kids. And I once dared to do that song with them, thinking it was so sweet, until a kid raised his hand and he said, uh, what's spooning? <laughs> At which point I dropped the song. Oh, but I, I know, uh, I have this whole bunch of pocket instruments that I learned, and I, because you realized when you had 200 second graders sitting in front of you that you better have some visuals as well as however much history you're gonna have. So I started putting together um, what I call pocket instruments, which were things that I thought kids might did play in the olden times that didn't cost much money, but maybe they had a chance of playing today. Like bones. A great guy uh, made them for me in South Carolina out of cow leg bone. And he said, you just, you hold one real tight. I'm sure we have some bones players in the room. You hold one shard tight and you hold one loose. Turn your hand over, go in two directions, and then you speed it up. And when you get that even sound like that, about eight weeks, once you get that even sound, you can stop the moving bone to syncopate it. And that's what they call playing the bones really like castanets, if you will, and nobody knows where it started. Isn't that wonderful? Get out of the way, old Dan Tucker. Get out of the way, old Dan Tucker. Get out of the way, old Dan Tucker. You're too late to get your supper. Old Dan Tucker was a good old man. Washed his face in a frying pan. Combed his hair with a wagon wheel and died with a toothache in his heel. Get out of the way, old Dan Tucker. Get out of the way, old Dan Tucker. Get out of the way, old Dan Tucker. You're too late to get your supper. Old Dan Tucker was a good old man. I come down the new cut road and I spied the groundhog and the toad. Every time that toad would sing, groundhog cut the pigeon wing. Get out of the way, old Dan Tucker. Get out of the way, old Dan Tucker. Get out of the way, old Dan Tucker. You're too late to get your supper. But I digress. that I really liked, got to like uh, songs out of the logging camps. One of the, what folklorists call informants, one of the traditional singers that my parents met was a man named John Galusha, an Irish name. And when I was over in Ireland, well, only been a couple of times, and I was in Ireland once, people said, oh yeah, I know that, know that name. It means son of God. Servant of God, servant of God, Galusha. So he was a logger in the woods. Um, my, my parents were doing these song collecting and then I got born and kind of ruined their style for a while. But eventually they just threw me in the back of the car. So I have this picture of me with John Galusha, the logger, when I'm three and he was almost 90. And that's, I have it blown up. And I say when, uh, I show it to kids in schools. I can say, here I am sitting next to a man who was born before Abraham Lincoln was president. And there's me sitting next to him. Hmm. History goes back fast. So John sang a lot of fun songs and 
He said it was amazing to go out into the woods in October and build a house they called a shanty. It has nothing to do with sea songs. Built a shanty and 30 to 100 men would be living in that place all winter long with only themselves and their entertainment, whatever it was. He said, you'd go out into the woods and you, you work from can until can't. <laughs> Four meals a day because you're working so hard. And you come back in and the, the shanty that they lived in, everything was strung up with hay, hay wire. That's where the term comes from apparently, is they strung everything up with wire from baling and if it ever snapped or broke, then the thing would go all over the room and be very dangerous, and you had to be careful, ergo, haywire. They only had their own entertainment. He said, uh, one thing he said was, you can't get rid of the, of the bed bugs or the lice. He said, all you can do is uh, sort of take the biggest ones off you, pet them for a little while, and throw them on the next guy. Humor in the face of hardship. <laughs> what would we do without it? Huh? But a lot of the songs that he sang too were about the tragedies of guys working in the river. So we, a little background. You go out in the woods, you cut down trees, and then carts come along, giant wagons, and you pile them up so high, I don't know how they got them to the heads of frozen streams down ice slopes, but they did. And they stacked them up at the heads of frozen streams in a process called yarding. And then when spring came, they would open up dams above where they were and the waters would start to flow down and they'd try to get these logs to move to places where they could sell them, like Glens Falls in the Adirondacks. And sometimes the logs didn't easily go down the river, in which case the hardest job of all was walking out on the logs and trying to get the key ones free so that the logs would go. And once they went, you got to get the hell out of there. And a lot of guys didn't. So he sang many a song. Well, I'll give you a little bit. Come all ye undaunted heroes who ride the restless deep. Think on this heartful young man who underneath doth sleep. He was just as fine a young man as ever you did see. It was on yon Banshi River he met his destiny. This young man's name was James A. Judge. I mean to let you know. I mean to sound his praises wherever he died to go. His hair hung down in ring ringulets, his flesh was white as snow, and he was admired by all the girls wherever he did go. Part of a longer song, uh, but John Galusha, when he sang, had that Irish way of ending the song with spoken words, so you know it's over. Great. Well, this song is also about a uh, tragedy that happened. Hmm. A woman named Jean Roberts Foster was born in the 19th century and made it out of the Adirondacks and actually became a model in New York in the early 1900s and then went over to France and hung out with Brancusi and Yates and a bunch of people then came back and went back into the Adirondacks as a social worker and while she did, she was collecting songs and stories, and she put them in a book. And that's where this song comes from. And if you want to help, your part says, My Girl's Waiting for Me. driving on the sack and dog floating on them slippery logs sleeping in the frozen bog my girl's waiting for me hard boiled eggs three times a day wet as beavers we hit the hay 
Not much sleep, but great good pay. My girl's waiting for me. Big French Joe and I went out to break the jam when the logs gave out. Prenne Guard, he gave a shout. My girl's waiting for me. Big French Joe, the logs drowned him. And he had no chance for to fight nor swim. But the logs drove up to the river's brim. My girl's waiting for me. His girl comes to me and cries. If he's dead, then I shall die. Bon petit, he used to sigh. My girl's waiting for me. We will find him down below. Around the bend where the water is slow. Floating with his pike in Petite will wring her hands as we scrape away at the yellow sand and bury him by the river strand. My girl's waiting for me. One more night and one more day, and the logs will reach the river bay, and I'll skin off these togs and I will say, My girl's waiting for me. Another traditional singer that my folks met was a woman named Lena Bourne, B-O-U-R-N-E, Fish. And she lived in Jaffrey, New Hampshire. So um, I do program on her songs for the New Hampshire Humanities Council. And I got to meet, I never got to meet her because she died in 1945. Uh, she was born in 1879. But I am happy to say that I got to go to her youngest granddaughter's 90th birthday party about five years ago. So Lena Born Fish, known affectionately as Grammy Fish, had lots of songs, a lot of songs about the sea. But this was called The Jolly Tinker. Um, in Ireland and in Europe, the tinkers have the connotation of gypsies. But over here in the 18th and 19th century, it was just somebody who sold you stuff and traveled around fixing things and selling things. And because he traveled and you didn't, uh, he was a romantic character. This little refrain says, Turiladdy, 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 Hiro. Probably Irish once. But now it's just Turiladdy, 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 Hiro. Let's go a little higher, see if we can do this. Tura laddie, tura laddie, tura laddie, high road from Lena Born Fish. I am a jolly tinker that goes from town to town. I'll mend your pots and kettles if you'll only bring them round. Tura laddie, tura laddie, tura laddie, high road. I know how to solder, and I can mend a pot. I can 
and also stop a hole so it will not leak a drop. Turraletti, turraletti, turraletti high road. I can mend umbrellas and I can tinker a clock. The housewives are all smiles when they see the tinker stop. Turraletti, turraletti, turraletti high road. Tinker never marries, as a girl in every town, and they shower me with kisses as they bring their kettles round. Turraletti, turraletti, turraletti high road. They feast me and regale me with choicest meats and wine. At whatever house I stop at, I can always sup and dine. Turraletti, turraletti, turraletti high road. My life is wild and free, and I do not seek renown. I'm just a jolly tinker with a girl in every town. Turraletti, turraletti, turraletti high road. I am a jolly tinker that goes from town to town. Mend your pots and kettles if you'll only bring them round. Turraletti, turraletti, turraletti high. Lena Bornfish. See if I can get this uh, monster song. Rudyard Kipling, 1890, wrote this, Road to Mandalay. And Peter Bellamy, the late singer from the 90s and 80s and 70s, uh, was, I can't call him a close friend. He was a strange guy, wonderfully weird. Um, but innovator in his singing style and his songwriting, as well as his putting tunes to traditional songs that didn't have melodies. So he put this together, and uh, unbelievably, I learned it. <laughs> On the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play and the dawn comes up like thunder out of China across the bay. By the old Mool Main Pagoda, looking lazy out to sea. There's a Burma girl awaiting, and I know she thinks of me. For the mist is in the palm trees, and the temple bells they say, Come ye back, ye British soldier, come ye back to Mandalay. Come ye back to Mandalay, where the old flotilla lay. You can hear their paddles chunking from Rangoon to Mandalay on the road to Mandalay where the flying fishes play and the dawn comes up like thunder out of China across the bay. Well, her little cap was yellow and her little cap was green and they called her Soupy all that just the same as Theba's queen. And I seen her first a smoking of a whackin' white cheroot and a wastin' Christian kisses on a heathen idol's foot. Heathen idol made of mud, what they call the great god Bud. But a lot she thought of idols when I kissed her where she stood on the road to Mandalay where the flying fishes play. And the dawn comes up like thunder out of China across the bay. When the mist was in the rice fields and the sun was sinking slow, she'd get her little banjo and she'd sing kula lo lo with her arm upon my shoulder and her cheek against my cheek. We'd sit and watch the steamers and the hotties pile and teak. 
elephants pile in teak in the sludgy squedgy creek where the silence hung so heavy you was half afraid to speak on the road to mandalay where the flying fishes play and the dawn comes up like thunder out to china across the bay Ah, but that's all shoved behind me Long ago and far away And there ain't no buses running From the bank to Mandalay And I'm a-learning here in London What the ten-year soldiers tell When you hear the East a-calling You won't ever eat naught else No, you'll never eat naught else But them spicy garlic smells and the sunshine and the palm trees and them tinkly temple bells on the road to Mandalay where the flying fishes play and the dawn comes up like thunder out of China across the bay. I am sick of wasting leather on these gritty paving stones and the blasted English drizzle brings the fever to me bones. And though I walks with 50 housemaids out of Chelsea down the Strand, and they talks a lot of love and awe, but what do they understand? Beefy face and grubby hand, lore, what do they understand? I've a neater, sweeter maiden in a cleaner, greener land. On the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder out of China across the bay. Ship me somewhere east of Suez, where the best is like the worst, and there ain't no Ten Commandments, and a man can raise a thirst. For the temple bells is calling, and it's there that I would be, by the old moon main pagoda, looking lazy out to sea. Come ye back to Mandalay, where the old flotilla lay. You can hear their paddles chunking from Rangoon to Mandalay. On the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder out of China across the bay. Twenty years ago, maybe longer, <clears throat> um, I got a call. The museum, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, was doing a uh, a show on death and dying, an art show on death and dying, and would I do a music program for that? <clears throat> well, if you stop to think about it, folk music is full of it <laughs> everywhere because it's so vital. Uh, so I said yes, had a good time. But I was doing a little kind of research to see if I could bone up what I knew. And I came across this book that had a collection of uh, epitaphs and things that had been found on the tops of tombstones. Very interesting and a kind of a folklore, if you will. One said she had 13, she had 13 children. She did all she could. <laughs> wow. A miner's tombstone said, gone underground for good. <laughs> hmm. uh, one, what was that one she, that said? Uh, here lies Samantha Jones. In her latter years, she was known for her virtue and sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I'd known her. But the one that really stuck with me was uh, I was in up in Glens Falls and doing some research on these old time songs from the lumber camps. And I found an epitaph written by a woman 
for herself. It was an 1880s newspaper clipping, and she'd written it for herself long before her demise. She'd been a cook in the logging camps, and what she wrote stuck to me. She said, uh, here lies a woman who always was tired, who lived in a house where help was not hired. In her last days on earth, she said, friends, I'm a going where cooking ain't done, nor washing, nor sewing. <laughs> and everything's always just to my wishes. And because they don't eat, there's no doing dishes. <laughs> don't weep for me now, don't weep for me never, because I'm doing nothing forever and ever. <laughs> you know, that just, like, like these songs that we do from the old times, they just put us right in touch with the people who lived 100 or 200 years ago, such human emotions coming through the poetry or the songs. So we talked about Frank Prophet, the man that uh, my parents met that first day in the mountains, the son-in-law of Nathan Hicks, who made the dulcimer for my father. And he lived, uh, they got to be great friends, my father and Frank Prophet, and um, he made old-time banjos, and I brought one with me that he made for me when I was a senior in college, which ended up being his last year. He died young, 56 years old. But he sang, oh, such great songs. The first day that um, my folks met him back in 38, he sang an old English ballad that he knew, and he sang a local drinking song, and he sang um, about a real murder that happened in Western North Carolina right after the Civil War. When a guy came back from the Confederacy, the cavalry, and got himself more than two girlfriends and handled the whole thing badly and killed one of them, got hanged for his trouble, and the song Tom Dooley got written right there in the mountains. And my father said, wow, what a song. You remember it? Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. Changed the world in 1958. <coughs> Introduced trad music, sort of, through the Kingston Trio into pop music. My father said, what an amazing song learned it as best he could from Frank Prophet singing, took it back, sang it for his friend Alan Lomax in New York, who said, wow, what a song, put it in a book called Folk Song USA in 1948, which got its way all around America, ended up with a college singing group in San Francisco called the Kingston Trio, who recorded three million copies of it. At least Frank Prophet got enough to build a new house there in Beach Mountain, North Carolina. <coughs> so I wanted to show you the banjo that Frank made for me. He said his father taught him to cut down a cherry tree and shape it just right. And this was a groundhog skin that he had for dinner. And then said the only way they could make strings was to use twine with wax on it for intestines. So I, I put strings on it, I pulled st steel on it as fast as I could. Somebody said, somebody said that the whole, the history of the banjo is the history of trying to make it louder. <laughs> it's really true because it started off as a West African instrument, a gourd with a skin on it, maybe two or three strings. Black people played that happily for a couple of hundred years here until white guys got interested in it and brought it to the New York stage in the 1840s, and then it became very popular all of a sudden. So instead of being a gourd, it started being flat about 1850 or something, or 60. Then it was really the instrument in the camps during the Civil War, which is when Appalachian guys came down out of the hills and found the banjo, took it back and made it their own. Didn't have any frets, this doesn't have any frets. That didn't happen until about 1880. So you have to struggle to figure out where to. But you end up sliding into notes, which is very much like African American singing. So 
So by rights, I should do Tom Dooley the way that Frank Prophet sang it to my father. Hang down, you hit Tom Dooley. Hang down, you hit and cry. Kill little Laurie Foster, and now you're bound to die. But I don't want to do that one. I'll do this one. I'll do the other song he sang, which is about local moonshine in Western North Carolina. Come all you booze fighters if you want to hear about the kind of liquor that they sell around here. Made way back in them lonesome hills where there's plenty of moonshine stills. One drop will make a rabbit lick a hound dog, make a rat whoop a wild hog, make a mouse spit in a black snake's face. No. One drop will make a rabbit lick a hound dog, it'll make a rat whoop a wild hog, make a mouse bite off a tomcat's tail, make a minnow raise a fuss with a whale. Make a feist dog bite off an elephant's snout. Make a poodle dog put a tiger to rout. Make a mouse spit in a black snake's face. Make a hard shell preacher fall from grace. It'll make a lamb lay down with a lion. After drinking that old moonshine, throw back your head and you take a little drink. Then for a week you won't be able to think. Then you begin to get awfully sick And you feel worse than the very old Nick You say that you never will drink it anymore But you've said that a hundred times before The moonshiners is a-getting mighty slick And the booze is a-getting mighty thick If they keep on badges they'll have to wear To keep from selling to each other, I declare Well, we should probably end this fet. I don't know. Oh yeah, I right. This beautiful little guy has gotten me out of more horrible situations in classrooms than you can possibly imagine. He's so funny. Uh, we call him in America Limberjacks, strange, uh, play on word of lumberjack. But in England, it's much more sensible. They call them jig dolls, and they're great. So I'll get this little guy. He usually likes his own mic, but we won't worry about that tonight. Uh, one of his favorite songs is an 1849 minstrel song called Lovely Fan, but it comes down to us as Buffalo gals want you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon. I think he likes it because it has some racy verses in it. it. Says, Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? As I was walking down the street, down the street, down the street, pretty little girl I chanced to meet, and she was fair to see. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? I got a gal, she's long and tall, sleeps in the kitchen with her feet in the hall. She's good looking and that's not all. Tell me, won't you come out tonight? Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? I got a gal, got freckles on her face, freckles on her face, freckles on her face. Asked her where she got them, she said every place. Tell me, won't you come out tonight? Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. 
Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? I was walking down the street, down the street, down the street. Pretty little girl I chanced to meet, and she was fair to see. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? I'd like to make that gal my wife, gal my wife, gal my wife. We'd be happy all our lives if she were by my side. His favorite thing is when an audience sings to him. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, it'd be great. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? One, two, three, hit it. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by do it again. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> he gets very upset if I don't use him. As well I can imagine. Well, um, this song, one of my favorites. And uh, back in the 80s, I was doing a lot of kids programs. And I heard about the Ohio Arts Council Arts and Education Program. They were sort of nationwide famous for doing great work. And uh, I was driving across country. and I applied and I got in and the first residency I ever did was in Holmesville, Ohio, which I'd not heard of before, in East Central Ohio. And when I got there, I found it was the largest Amish community in America. Incredible. And I mean, half the kids were in their dress and then, and then the, those are the ones that were more liberal and would, could, could go to elementary school and gnash the uh, regular public schools. But they were so well behaved and beautiful to work with. And I got to meet some people in the community, including two sisters, Mary and Emma Yoder, who sang this wonderful song, uh, a gospel song. I later found out that it was uh, written about 1905 and recorded too. But I didn't know that at the time, and they didn't know it. They just learned it out of oral tradition. Called Beautiful Life. And um, it's got a great chorus. It's lengthy and tough, but uh, you're good. So we'll see. Mm. Well, this is a baritone concertina. It's a, to the range of a cello and actually the first one I ever owned, and so I love it. It says, Life's evening sun is sinking low A few more days and I must go To meet the deeds that I have done Where there will be no setting sun Is that too hard for you? No. I could line it out. I actually can line it out. It says, life's evening sun is sinking low. Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days and I must go. A few more days and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. To meet the deeds that I have done. Be no setting sun where there will be no setting sun. We'll see. Each day I'll do some noble deed By helping those who are in need My life on earth is but a span So I will do the best I can Life's evening sun, life's evening sun Is sinking low, a few more days and I must go A few more days I must go to meet the deeds that I have done, to meet the deeds that I have done. Be no setting sun where there will be no setting sun. To be a child of God each day, 
My light must shine along the way. I'll sing his praise while ages roll and try to help some troubled soul. Life's even sun, life's even sun is sinking low. A few more days and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done where there will be no setting sun. While traveling down life's weary road I'll try to lift some traveler's load I'll try to turn his night to day Make flowers bloom along the way Life's evening sun, life's evening sun Is sinking low a few more days A few more days And I must go to meet the deeds I have done where there will be no setting sun the only life that can endure is one that's kind and good and pure and so for God I'll take my stand and try to lend Help in hand, life's evening sun, life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done, where there will be no setting sun. Thank you all. Great singing. talk about the Tillett family in uh, Wan Cheese in North Carolina on the Outer Banks. And I have a new friend who has that name here. She's related to those folks down there. Um, the Tillett family sang so much. Eliezer sang, life's evening sun is sinking low, a few more days and I must go. Um, and yeah, all right, Tink Tillett sang this song which came out of the uh, Scottish Music Hall in 1913, believe it or not. Oh, just a funny story about Tink Tillett. Uh, the, my parents had a lot of tough things because they were making discs in those early days and they only took a couple of verses down on sound recording so they had enough money to buy more discs. My mother knew shorthand and that m meant that her texts were great, you know. Sometimes these professors went into the hills, collected these old songs, and then gave them to graduate students to type out the words, and they had no idea what the rural people were saying. But my mother got everything. And in one song about Napoleon Bonaparte, Tink Tillett sang, Beast it best in time, for what's to come you know not. And my mother said, uh, Mr. Tillett, what was that? She said, Beast it best in time. She said, Do you know what it means? He said, No. Wasn't until much later we found it in a little chapbook. 
Be ye steadfast in time, for what's to come you know not. No way that could survive an oral tradition. Be steadfast in time, for what's to come you know not. But he sang this song out of the music hall he must have got from some fisherman, English fisherman. There's somebody waiting for me in an old cabin down by the sea with a smile and a wee cup of tea. There's somebody waiting for me. Once on a time, is that right? Nah. Yeah, let's get serious here. Once on a time, it was a very long time, a year or it may be three. I was out of a job and I didn't have a bob when an old tar said to me, would you like to go and have some fun while you're young and stout and strong? So we sailed away the very next day to a good old shanty song. Chorus says, there is some somebody waiting for me in an old cabin down by the sea with a smile and a wee cup of tea. There is somebody waiting for me. There is somebody waiting for me in an old cabin down by the sea with a smile and a wee cup of tea. There is somebody waiting for me. I know a cot in a very sweet spot. I think of it every day. It's all that I've got, my whole job lot, and it's miles and miles away. There were tears and sighs and fond goodbyes when the time came round to go. But as I jog along, I sing this song to myself because I know there is somebody waiting for me in an old cabin down by the sea with a smile and a wee cup of tea there is somebody waiting for me i know a face the very sweet face the face of my very best girl i've seen all sorts in the different ports as I sailed around the world On my last trip east I'd a rare old feast The taste's still on my tongue But now I sail west To my very best little girl again and home There is somebody waiting for me In an old cabin down by the sea With a smile and a wee cup of tea there is somebody waiting for, do it again. There is somebody waiting for me in an old cabin down by the sea with a smile and a wee cup of tea. There is somebody waiting for me. Thank you all. Mm-hmm.